All right, I want to do a quick video here on creating moldings on uh, a building. So uh, we're going to use NURBS tools for this. Um, and let's say, for instance, this is the building, and you just want to add like kind of a crown molding that goes around this thing. So uh, the first uh, way that you could do this is you could grab all the edges um, that are uh, the, the path that you want this to, to go on, and then you could do modify, convert, and then poly edges to curve. This is a good way to go um, if your building supports it. So I'm going to set the, the degree to 1 and click Convert. And so now you'll see I have a curve. And if I press uh, F9, you'll see that we have some additional geometry in here. So this these CVs here aren't really necessary. And so depending on the complexity of your, uh, your structure, if you have a whole bunch of subdivisions, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of extra geometry that you don't really need. And you can go back and delete it. Um, that can be a pain in the neck. Um, and in some cases, you won't be able to create uh, a path like this just because you might have multiple independent um, objects, mul multi multiple separate objects. Okay, so uh, if that works for you, then uh, that converting method is a great way to go. If it doesn't, then you can uh, do it this way that I'm going to show you right now, which is just um, create curve tool, go to your EP curve tool, you could use CV, it doesn't really matter, uh, and just set it to linear. All right, so I want this to be straight lines. And then uh, the one gotcha here is, I'm going to turn on wireframe on stage just so you can see where all the verts are. Um, the, the one gotcha is don't start on a corner. Start on a flat spot. Even if you don't need the geometry there, use it just for this creation, and then you can delete the geometry later. So I'm going to start here at this spot. Don't start on a corner. All right, so I'm going to go add the uh, snap to verts here, and then just click around. I'm going to skip these ones, and I'm just going to go to the places where uh, it changes direction. So I'll just complete that as I come back around to the first point, press enter. That'll give me that curve, F9. You'll see now that it doesn't have the extra geometry, the extra CVs that it doesn't need, except for this place, which we actually do need. Okay, and now I'm going to make the uh, profile curve that we're going um, to um, extrude along this sucker. Um, so I'll do that from the front view. And I'll go ahead and draw out um, something. Uh, tends to be that the Bezier curve tool is one of the easiest uh, to use. It's very similar to Illustrator, Photoshop, and lots of other tools. So if you just click, it looks like I still have uh, Snap to Verts on, so I'll just delete that out and turn off Snap to Vert. If you just click, then you get um, a straight edge, right? straight connection. Whereas if you click and drag, you get uh, a Bezier handle, so something like that. Um, so uh, I'll just try something like this and see what 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 comes out of it I think this is going to be fairly hideous to start with uh, yes indeed we are starting uh, truly ugly all right so I'll just go with something like this it's basically going to be fine for a demonstration um, up here and then connect across back to the middle okay so that is uh, that is <laughs> that is no excuse for a molding right there. That is n not an excusable molding. So, uh, but this does give me an opportunity to show you how uh, how some how these tools work. So I want to now edit this. This is um, pretty awful looking. I can't break tangency with the standard move tools, but you can with, if you just go back and grab the Bezier curve tool, then you can break these tangencies. And so let's say for instance here, I want to break tangency on this one. So I'm just going to control, click and drag, I'm going to line the handle up so it comes in linear, and then I'm going to hold control and, and pull this out to the side. And that breaks that tangency. And so now I can uh, control this shape um, with a lot more accuracy. Um, so I'm just going to add another one here. So I have an in and an out. Um, maybe make that somewhat parallelish. Um, let's say something like that. And I think this one maybe should be a little taller or something. Um, We'll just go with something like that. Um, and then, if, of, of course, if I want to add something that's like a sharper corner in here, I can always uh, just click and add a sharp corner. You can hold uh, Control and click, and that will convert that. And then you can just click and drag to, to move that around. So I could say um, this is I'm looking for something like that. And this is still looking um, so bad. Um, so I'm just going to quickly try to do something to make this look a little better. Uh, maybe this thing needs uh, just a, a sharp point um, up here. Um, all right. Um, actually, that would probably be better off to be uh, a little bit rounded. I'm back where I was, still looking awful. Um, so let me just start something like that. In fact, I may 
Now this is going to be fine. So I'm just going to break this. I'm going to let it be a little bit rounded, something like that. And then let's see what we got here. Oh boy, that is ugly. <laughs> That's so ugly. Um, all right, so I'll just pull these guys in, something like this. And then I'm probably going to need to add another curve here uh, to, to break this. So I'll just go back to the, the Bezier curve tool, add here, and then uh, and just move this thing to wherever I felt like it needed to be. Uh, so there we go. Okay, so I have a feeling this is uh, not going to get much prettier. Uh, I am not a um, designer of <laughs> moldings. Um, so I'm going to grab these and I'm going to snap them. I'm going to snap uh, these to the center and these to the top. The reason being where you find the pivot point for this is where it's going to attach to that curve. So if I want this to attach exact, then I want to go ahead and grab my, my verts here and snap those on... Um, on Y, and you can see that it didn't really snap flat here, and um, and that might be because retain component spacing is on. So let me just double check here. So I'll turn and retain component spacing off, and then hold X, and that will snap it completely flat. So that's what I wanted it to do. Um, and then these ones here, I want to snap those. Uh, so I'm going to hold X and snap that to the grid. So we'll just say that looks fine. These ones here uh, are, should not be uh, Bezier um, handles, so I'm going to go back um, to the Bezier tool. And I'm sorry for how long this is going on, but I'm just going to control click those guys to turn them back into linear points, um, and then we're just going to go on with our lives here. So we're going to say that's that's it. That's <laughs> that's our excuse for molding. All right, um, and I'm going to select that profile and then select the path curve. So profile then path. And then go to Surfaces, Extrude, and then basically all of these options to the right side over here. And then I'm also going to go ahead and use this as a, as a time to go ahead and output my polygons. Although you can do that um, as a separate operation later if you want to keep your nerves or if you want to be able to play around with um, the conversion type, uh, then you could, you could do that. I'm going to just set this out as control points just to keep it simple. This will give us uh, some linear geometry, but it'll basically work fine. So I'll just click Extrude. Okay, if you end up like this, where um, the profile that I've made goes inside the building, it's not a problem. You can just spin it around. So 180 degrees on Y, well, it's gonna, that's going to do it. Pop that right out. And I'll turn off the wireframe on Shaded here. So now you can see we have some shading artifacts at the corners where it's looking a little ugly. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, this is a, a shift, right click, and I'll just do soften harden on that. And that just fixes those up. So you can see now it looks nice and clean. All right, so it looks like basically that's, uh, that's holding up fine. Um, occasionally when you do this, um, you'll end up with some weird artifacts, like it'll pinch together uh, at the seam. And if you end up with that, uh, a simple solution is just to delete these faces here and then just um, bridge those back together and that'll fix that right up. I'm not entirely sure what's causing that bug but it seems like it's to do with the direction of the flow or maybe the direction of the flow and the um, creation of the profile. I'm not really entirely sure but I do occasionally see that where you get that pinching at the corner. So uh, in this case though I have no problems so it's just basically uh, ready to be patched up. So I'm going to go ahead and um, merge these verts. In fact, it's common to have um, some extra geometry that needs to be merged out. So I'm just going to grab everything and just make sure that I have a nice low threshold set. So a thousandth or so. So I have 340 verts now. Now I have 225. And now I'll just get rid of this extra line here that I don't need. Um, and then just, uh, this is a shift right click menu, delete edge and get rid of that. So that then gives me um, sort of a final molding. Uh, for this thing. It, you can see that it adds a lot of detail. Even though I made a really pretty ugly molding, uh, well actually in the linear form it doesn't look nearly as ugly as it as it, as it did um, in the curve mode. But you know where you can, you can go back if, if this is, if you're fine with this thing uh, being linear and not having uh, these sorts of um, small indentations, uh, then I can always come come back and and get rid of any extra loops that are unnecessary. Um, so I won't spend forever um, making this the most efficient, but that generally won't change this profile very much. And this basically holds up. So again, if I'm going to see this building from a, from a distance, 
that's gonna look fine. I probably don't need to be much more detailed than that, but if you needed your actual curves, you can just use a, a different um, convert type uh, instead of going out as control points, and then that would allow you to still have the curvature um, on this. Okay, so, but for those of you that did run into this problem where things pinched up, uh, if you run into that, again, you can just grab all of those faces where it meets and delete them out, and then you can just um, bridge these elements together. So if I grab um, the top edge uh, to the bottom edge, and then same thing uh, on this side, um, and then run a bridge on that, that should, uh, that should work out fine. Um, so I'll just bridge those together, and now you can see that even if you had uh, a problem at that um, start and end point, it's very easy to just remove that problem and end up with your very beautiful molding. All right, that's it.